Hi, this is Jean Jacques Taylor, and you're listening to Jot Talk. This is a podcast where I talk about the Cowboys, the team I've covered as a beat writer, columnist, TV insider, and radio host for 28 years. I'll also talk about the NFL and the things I love working out, streaming, food, and all things down. Welcome to Jock Talk, where sports is fluid. What's true today might not be true an hour, a day, or a month from now. I'm going to give you the truth straight, no chaser. Glad to have you aboard. Let's get it. Welcome to episode 107 of Jacques Talk. I'm Jean Jacques Taylor, joined by my boy, Big Joe and the Big Rig. What's the sit, Rep Dog? We are 47 seconds in. Uh, we are 5x5, five five and Operation Jacques Talk is a go. Glad to hear that. This is episode 107, number seven. Who comes to mind? Randall Cunningham. Really? Yes, sir. I was more of a Steve Berline guy myself. Okay, okay. That's a good seven, too. But Not right. a lot of sevens in Dallas Cowboys history, uh, but uh, I was really more of a Steve Berline guy yeah. than Randall Cunningham. Yeah. Like, Randall Cunningham played in Dallas in 1999 or 2000. I can't remember. And while I covered the team then, as a beat guy, I still don't really remember him. Like, I know he played. Yeah. He played But well. I, don't, I don't have a visual of Randall Cunningham. Like, I don't remember talking to Randall Cunningham. And being like, hey, dog, what's up? Da, 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 da. Yeah. I know I did, but I don't rem- I don't really have a recollection of that. Well, you had the great Troy Aikman here. and uh, You know what? It's probably because even though Randall was here, he was still the backup quarterback. Mm-hmm. And I never viewed him as the quarterback. So even when he played, I was just like, well, you just holding it, holding the fort till Aikman get back. And he was mad when Troy came back. When Troy came back and played – Troy threw the five picks, and then Randall got mad. And then when Troy got hurt again, Randall said, I'm hurt too. <laughs> I don't really remember all of that. Hell yeah, I do. Because he was, he was, he was, he was, uh, he was huffing and puffing. He played well when, when Aikman was out, but he was mad when Aikman got back. And then, yeah, he, he was pissed. I'm saying that because I've been working on a project, and I don't remember that. Uh, I mean, I have to go back and do a deep dive at some point, but I don't, I don't remember it like that. Which doesn't mean anything other than I don't remember it like that. Yeah. But that's interesting. Uh, on to uh, the matter of the day, which is your Dallas Mavericks. How about it? 108, 105, big win. And I don't like this terminology, and so I refuse to use it. It's just me. I think it's, in a lot of cases, it's dumb, it's lazy. And it's cliched, and as a lover of words, and as a guy who tries to put things in perspective, I just, it's just me. It's a personal thing, okay? I don't like the shit about the Mavericks stole game one. There was nothing about that game that they stole, they just won it. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I mean, it don't, like, it don't. It don't bother me. It's just something. It's just a saying, you know. Right. Well, you play I, I to win like, the game. And da, 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 and I don't like sayings. Stuff. Okay. <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I just mean I just I just don't. I don't like just saying stuff for the purpose of just saying stuff, which is oh they stole game. It wasn't nothing about that that they stole. They played well. The Timberwolves played well. It was a hell of a game. They made a couple more plays at the end. They won the game. Nothing stealing about it. Stealing might be when you get down. 15 and you come back and you eke it out right at the end and you didn't really play that well, that might be stolen. But uh, phenomenal game. But I thought the Wolves were in trouble, and I always go back to this a couple weeks ago, for the same reason I thought the Mavericks were in trouble when they were playing Oklahoma City. And they had played great, and we looked up and it was like, why are they only up by like eight? The Timberwolves could not miss In the first half, they were playing great. McDaniels, who averaged 17, had 19 at the half. They hitting all these threes. It's a three-point game. And I'm like, y'all should really be blowing the Mavericks out. But it's a three-point game. And uh, I think the T-Wheels got a bit of a problem. What did you think? Uh, Man, I'm trying to think of a PG way of saying. Don't lie. Why? Why? Well, they shot they wide what they did. Oh, okay, yeah, PG would have been better, man. Okay, I'm trying to say, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't know what else to say. They they what came they, out I mean, they came out so fired up and they They went they, for the first round knockout, yeah, second round you, knockout when they go. didn't get it. There you go. 
There you they go. had nothing left to give. They might have to edit that out then. I, I don't know. No, nah, man, let, let it go. It's well, right. I'm just saying, hey, look, listen. They they came out swinging for the fences, all right? How about that? Just, just you know, let's, let's get a home run right now. Let's get the first round knockout. You know, the, the, they hyped. The crowd was going crazy. They was going crazy and, you know. Um, and all of that is true. Their their issue was they could never separate. Even early, they like I think their biggest lead may have been nine, but they never separated. And so the Mavericks were always hanging around. And um, you know it was a three point game going into the uh, fourth quarter, which means it's on and popping. And I've said this from the beginning of the playoffs, and I'm not breaking any news. And it, it just is what it is. If you're in a close game. With the Mavericks at the end, you have a problem because they got two superstars and two closers. You got a problem if it's a two or three point game in the last three or four minutes because they got two guys who can do things and there's literally nothing you can do about it. It's either they make it or they miss, but they ain't got nothing to do with you 99% of the time. And, um, you know, Luca. Kyrie took over in the first first quarter, first half with 24, I think. Luca took over in the fourth quarter with 15, and you know they closed them out, man, with a uh, with a phenomenal one-two punch. Kyrie had 12 of the first 22. Something yeah, he like came that. out uh, yeah. very aggressive, and yeah. you know he he made well, a point or somebody three made words, a point. Three words, three words, right here. What's I it? got Kyrie. Well, I got Kyrie Anthony. Ant-Man. Now check this out. We love you. I, you know what? I'm, you know, I didn't view that as a slight when he said it. I thought he meant, and I could be wrong. I thought he meant, I'm, I, I, my matchup is with Kyrie. That's who I'm covering. I didn't, I didn't take it like, oh, I got this mother. Yeah, bring it on. Maybe that's what he meant, but that's but, not uh, even how I interpreted it. What do the greatest players look for? Oh, Any no, motivation. Just, I, yeah, I, dog. Hey, I was hey, like, hey, man. Hey, Emmitt Smith scored 25 touchdowns. Y'all doubted me the whole time. I, y'all didn't think man. I could ever do that. Man, I'm the – hey, whatever it no, took. You're right. Whatever you're it right. took. Hey, Emmitt was one of my favorite players of all time. But whatever it took to get him fired up, hey, it's all good. Same thing. Kyrie was – hey, how you – it's not what you mean. It's how the other guy take it. You know what? Props to you because that's exactly right. It don't even matter. What I thought he meant. It don't even matter what he thought he meant. He might have been as respectful as ever. Man. Yeah, got, yeah. He might have got back in the thing like, man, Kyrie is that dude. I don't know how I'm going to stop yeah, it. But yeah. I'm going to give it a good shot, fellas, and we'll see what happens. That you know ain't what? what Kyrie heard. But I think, Kyrie, Ant, I think Ant meant what you talking about because Ant, he, he, remember he talked shit to, to uh, Kevin Durant, but he gave Kevin Durant so much love at the press conference. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and you think he, he said he's one of my favorite players. So I think. On one hand, he is a ultra ultra competitive, but like a lot of NBA players, he can be a fanboy sometimes. You know, like I, right, you know, I'm I, I did Kyrie. I've been watching Kyrie. I got Kyrie. You know, uh, Kyrie was like, "All right, you got me. You finna get me." Yeah, man. And not only did Kyrie put him in a in a blender in the first half when he scored twenty four. Chasing him around, warm down and warm out, and affected him in the second half. He that's why I no say legs. about the, that's why I was saying about swinging for the fence. They, that's their emotional leader, and they were so fired up. And uh, yeah, he he was he was dragging visibly, wobbling down the court. Like y'all call time out, get him up out of there. Cause when he when he tried to guard Luca, Luca put him in the damn spin cycle. Well, yeah, literally, was... literally in the spin cycle. Um, well, it's true and. You know, again, the problem that the Mavericks pose for people this year is that they got two of the best. Yep. All-time best already. I mean, Kyrie been there, and Luka, is, there's no doubt he's going to end up as one of the all-time best. It's just a problem. Obviously, it doesn't mean that they can't lose or can't be beaten nah, or any of that. Nah. But what it means is when it's close games, you got a problem trying to figure out how to deal with both of these cats because number one, they play, they can they can just do things where there's nothing you can do about it, as I told y'all. The other thing is they tend to make the right play. So if you leave a gap there, 
and they trust their teammates to make to make the play that they're supposed to make, much like Jordan did back in the day. And so that's all I'm saying is that well, the, the, they're just a problem. That's what I was saying earlier this year is that Luca, Luca and Kyrie trust each other. You got Luca diving for balls. You got Luca giving up the ball. You know, letting Kyrie do whatever. And Luca don't have to be on for four quarters. You know what I'm saying? He remember he used to get tired at the end of games because he had to carry the whole offense. No, I think you're right, and I think it's a situation where um, I've seen this before in different. It, I've seen it different people at different jobs, not just basketball. It's uh, it's not it's when it's when you recognize that somebody else is the same twelve letter cuss word that you are. Yeah. Then you trust them. Yeah. Like you might be good, but you not you might just not be that dude. So I don't really trust you. I'm gonna do it myself. Yep. But when you recognize that that other dude is the same twelve letter cuss word that you are, then you don't mind giving him whatever, passing the baton, allow him to do their thing because you know the same preparation you did, the same work you did, the same effort you did, they did the same thing. So you trust them like that. And uh, I think Luca and Kyrie have forged that trust from watching each other practice and watching each other prepare. And uh, now they believe in each other. And, again, it just makes the Mavericks a very dangerous opponent. Just dangerous. I'm not saying they're going to win the championship. Although I will say this. I'm also not going to tell y'all, based on what I've seen, that I would be shocked if they did. Because it has a 2011 feel to me, to it to me, in terms of um, the team. Like, the team with Dirk and Jet and Kidd and Sean Marion, that was a very close-knit, all-for-one kind of team with one superstar. This is like that with two. And the role players like that team fully understand what their role is. And to me, to win a championship, most of the time, your role players can help get you there, and then you need a guy, Dirk, to get you over the hump. Well, these boys got two. And so, again, um, they're not the favorites to win the championship, but I'm just telling y'all, it's not really even based off of last night because uh, they're not going to sweep the Wolves. So it's not like they're not going to lose a game. But to beat them four times is going to take something. It's going to take a very concerted effort. And, you know, when you get to it, man, I'm like, when you're looking at the big picture, Even a game seven, because I still think it's going seven, doesn't bother me if you're you're a Mavericks fan because of what? You got the two superstars on the road, and for one game, a game seven, they can galvanize themselves and and be like, just like last night where Kyrie Kyrie was like, we haven't had a lot of guys in the Western Conference Finals. Let me show y'all how to get down in the Western Conference Finals and score 24 in the first half. They got guys capable of doing that. So uh, don't panic when they lose a game in this series. Understand it's a long road, but this is a very dangerous team. It's a very good team, and uh, they're going to continue to create problems for uh, the Timberwolves. If you look at last night's game, man, I was shocked in the first half that they just got whatever they wanted in the lane, scored 62 points in the paint, 44 in the first half. They only averaged 46 for the season in the paint. And uh, they were lobbing, they were dunking. I mean, nothing changed. And uh, that left me a little shocked. What about you? Nah, I don't uh, – I'm not as technical about basketball as I am about football, but the type of defense that the Timberwolves run is, is, is a defense where they kind of let the center freelance. I think they call it a drop-style defense where he kind of yeah. freelance and he, he can – he's really not as good head up and he got to leave his man to get, you know, to get, get his blocks. And so what happens is uh, Likely and uh, Gafford, them guys was cutting behind him and getting dunks, yeah. you know, getting in uh, the lane because you got to get out on the perimeter. You know, he got to get kind of halfway to the perimeter to uh, to to, or, to be effective. The center you know, does anyway. He got to meet because Luca and Kyrie were getting to the paint. Yeah. He got to step so that they just don't get a wide open shot from right. 10 feet. Right. And as soon as he stepped, because they both got point guard mentality, because they are essentially point guards, mm-hmm. they just give up the rock. And as you say, cut right behind them for a dunk. It'll be interesting to see 
if they continue to play that style of defense. They're going to um, have to. Gobert, ain't, he not going to. Either they're going to take him out, they're going to take Gobert out, or. Now, that's what we, that's what we were talking about earlier, where yeah. do the Mavericks run him off the court because they went small. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting. And then they had to put Nas in there because he got the lean. I mean, he could do that at 16. Oh, Nas Reed can do a lot of things. They just got to decide if they want to do it or not. Uh, but they're not a very deep team, so you don't want to take a cat out who's averaging 30 minutes a game. It's an interesting dilemma mm-hmm. for the Timberwolves and one that I didn't think that they would be facing in game two. Well, for them to be top heavy in the lineup, what do you think they play? Seven, eight players maybe? Seven? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so for them to be like that, that's why your boy was tired. That's why your boy was dragging ass, Ant-Man. Right. You know, and, and, and he can get away with it in other series, but I don't know if he can get away with it with this cause. Man, he was chasing, like like I say, he was chasing Kyrie all over the place. And you have to chase them cats because if you don't, either one of them can hit you for 40 or 50, no problem. And you can't say that about everybody in the NBA. You ain't got to chase You ain't got to chase Luka. And what you do when you get there? It take you. Did you see the spin move? He put the ball. It takes five years to get around. Luca is wide, man. It takes five mm-hmm. years to get around him. When he spin with that ball, he ain't going that fast. But it's gonna take you a long ass time to try to get it. Nah, and then he put your ass on his hip. Yep. And then you done. You out of here. You out. You out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you done. You know what I'm saying? You can uh, find Luca, but what you do with him when you get there? You know, it's like man. Uh, you know the best part of Luca's game that nobody talks about, including me. Is his handles because you can't do all of that if you don't have superior handles. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, and the way he controls the ball up and down, very low, so he can't get to it. Then he get you on that hip. Yeah, I and don't. That's, that's, that's why I don't. Butt. I don't play with him on two K because whatever stat line I get is not good enough for me. <laughs> it's like man, I should have had more, you know. But the, his base, man, his base, the handle, his, his power. Like I said, he a bullet down there. He pushes yeah. people around down there, and he got quick him a little bit, but he's his strength, man. And and he's showing some leadership, too. Did you see him cuss Gafford out? Yeah, he did. <laughs> Usually he's he talking to the refs. Hey, man, if you don't come down here and set the screen, he said a whole lot more stuff, but I think Gafford got it, though. You don't even usually see yeah, him get on. Yeah, because Gafford you know. tried to dap him up, and he's no. Yeah. He gets no dap right now. Oh, he, come he on, gets dog. later. You yeah. can't get it right now. Put your yeah. head out your ass and let's go. Let's go. I need you to do uh, what you're supposed to do. What you think you, you waiting on? What you waiting on us to run a play for you? Man, set the screen and come on. Uh, when you talk about Luka and you talk about Kyrie, um, there are different moments during a game. And, and I've said it many times because Bill Parcells used to say it. It's one of my favorite things to try to, to, try to recognize is there's a point in a game where it's there to be won. And Bill Parcells used to say it all the time. The great players and the great teams recognize that moment and they turn it up at that moment because they're like, oh, we got shot right here. You know, for example, it could be a game where it's 24-14, you get a three and out. Now's the time where if you go up 31-14, it's a wrap. And that's when you need your guys to focus to lock in, we just got the three and out. We got a short field. If we can focus and score right here, we break their will. The game is over. All right? So, to me, last night, it was the opposite. Luca felt, you know what? T-Wolves feel like they're about to pull away. Let me make sure that that don't happen. And I believe the score was 89-84 Minnesota. About four minutes left. And Luka went down and hit a jumper just to the right of the paint. Came down, hit another jumper right around the elbow. Mm-hmm. And then came down and hit a three. Um, and the thing about the three, I mean, it was, uh, I mean, and that, that made it 91-89. It was their first lead in a time long out. time. Time out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, damn. Seven-point uh, run by Luka. Yeah, but it was that moment where you're like, hey, I think the game is slipping. Let me go step up and make sure we don't, they don't separate right here. And then one of the, uh, one of the plays that went unknown uh, or unnoticed, I think, is uh, we saw the end of it, but it's the beginning of it that we, that we overlooked. 
And uh, it's uh, Anthony Edwards hits a three. It's 102.98. T. Wolves. And again, it feels like, well, damn, they just hit a three again. If the Mavericks don't go down to get a bucket here, they could be down six or seven. And again, they could slip away. And what happened? Kyrie went hard to the bucket. Uh, Gobert challenged him. He missed it. And who got the rebound, dog? Jarek Lively went up, got the rebound, kicked it out to Luka, who decided he didn't want the open three. He wanted the contested three <laughs> over Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Swish. And all of a sudden, it's 102-101. And then, um, you know, that's when uh, a couple minutes later, Luka, uh, you know, starts to break. To Kyrie, ends up with P.J. in the corner for a three. Mavericks up 104-102. And then uh, Luka breaks up the lob, which was a fantastic play. And, uh, you know, after he hits a jumper, they're up 106-102. And, uh, you know, then it's just a matter of can you get it done. A uh, dumb foul by uh, Josh Green. And then an even dumber foul. uh, I guess that was a dumb foul was by uh, Josh Green. for Set him up for three at the end, but it worked out. And the uh, the Mavericks come away 108, 105 victors. And now here's the question, Doc. Typically, we get the answer very quickly. Um, and Jason Kidd said all the right stuff in the locker room after the game. Here's the question, bro. Are they satisfied with one? You talking about satisfied when, like, like, we don't care if we, we win the next game? Yeah, we got game one. We no, good. No, they too. No, they, they're not satisfied with one. I say that because, you know, a lot of times we want to split. We got to split. Then you come out and get smoked by 25 in well, game two. The, yeah, well, yeah. We don't. Because we don't, they, we don't care about stealing one, we damn sure don't care about split. Right. So, let's, let's – I, th- I, don't, I don't think this team is satisfied. I don't – I don't – no. It got, I mean, look at – look, number 11 ain't going to let them be satisfied. All right. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is not, yeah, and this is not a matter of, you know, it's just human nature to relax a little bit. The Timberwolves will be beyond desperate because they know, you know, uh, just like they did with Denver, going down 0 2 at the crib is not the way to try to win a series. Well, it depends. This is where you find out what kind of coach that uh, Minnesota has. Are the, are the inmates running the asylum? Or is the coach running the thing? Cause Ant Man is a good kid, but he was so hyped, and he got to learn how to control his tempo in this type in this particular series. Because if he don't, he gonna they gonna be the they gonna be the same thing. They gonna they gonna fault at the end, you know. And that's it's it's really youth versus uh uh you know veterans. You know, as far as we the veterans on this on this end. The last two series we've been to them. with Kyrie and his experience and Jason and his experience, I think the, the Mavericks got a lot of knowledge right there, and yeah. so that I think that helps them. Whereas, uh, whereas uh, Minnesota, mm, they led by some young cats, literally. Right, it'll be uh, it'll be very interesting to see. Uh, we know that they'll come out. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what kind of adjustments get made. You know, the big thing is they shot 49 threes. They're not a three-point shooting team. Um, now, it could be that they got them. They hit so many early, they were just like, hey, they're giving us, we're hitting them, and let's go for it. But that might also be a situation where the Mavericks sucked them into their game and made them, you know, play a style that they're not that comfortable with. Kind of like when you used to play them run and shoot uh, basketball teams like Loyola Marymount, or don't laugh at me, y'all. Uh, Ennis High School used to play their version of the same thing where they were trying to get a shot off in five seconds. And they just suck you into their game because they're giving you these wide open shots. And it's really not your style. And so you start taking them, and before you know it, they better at it than you are, and that's a wrap. Um, so I don't know if the Mavericks may have tricked them into a little bit to playing that three point game. Um, you know, it was interesting. And the announcers made a couple of remarks about it, is that P.J. Washington missed some threes. He wasn't hitting his threes. But they were threes from the wing. Those aren't his threes. Oh, his three. from the corner. Particularly the left corner. Yeah. 
And so it matters, you know what I mean? I mean, he was shooting from the right wing. It was like, dog, that ain't really your shot. Uh, or we haven't seen you make that shot consistently. So what happened at the end of the game? He in the left wing, rock bottom, nothing but net. And so, you know, um, a more interest, a more detailed conversation would be, how did he end up with those shots on the wing? Were they designed or were they just flowed offense? And uh, when the Mavericks are really running the offense, we know it because – He's shooting him from the corner, or Derrick Jones Jr. is shooting him, maybe from the left wing, but usually he's in one of the corners as well. Because when they when Josh Green hit his shot, where did he hit it from? The right corner, which is normally where you see him shooting from. Yep. Um, let's take a shot here and see if Clarence e. Hill Jr. answers the phone. Because I sent him his text, but he has not responded. Uh, but if he doesn't, we're going to talk about the Cowboys anyway. If he does, we'll just add him to the conversation. Right. Clancy Hill Jr. Brought, each, brought to you each and every Friday by Smokey John's Barbecue. 1850 West Mockingbird. Food Hello. to live for. What up, dog? What's up with y'all? Nothing, man. Uh... You know, we I didn't you didn't respond to me, so I wasn't sure if you was up or not. Could have been a late night with the Mavericks. And the first of all, I show. never first of all, if you go through text messages, I never respond. I mean, how do you figure that, Joe? How do you how do you handle somebody who never responds? Hey man, listen, listen. right off the you're bat, you're supposed to trust. Hey, right off the bat, he's spicy. Let's go. Yeah, I let's guess you're supposed. Let's go. No. Let's go. <laughs> listen, listen I, mean, I never respond. You always call. You usually call it nine. It's nine twenty. Right. Never wait. <laughs> well, sometimes never. I mean, sometimes we may have discussed it, but I mean, you know. No, no, uh, no. You always you, 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 you go back, and I got right, now watch. I ain't gonna say nothing text. next week. Yeah, it's gonna go straight to voicemail <laughs> next week. Now you better not in today's world. You better keep all them text messages. <laughs> keep all, all of them. Text messages. Uh, so, Dak says he likes the fucking pressure. What do you think? And I'm referring to to the other teams in the in the Dallas Fort Worth area getting no, to the I, conference you know, championships. Like I, like I said, I love Dak because you know. It's, yeah, you love Dak, all right. I oh, see. See that? Now, 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 now I got to cut you. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to put a shank out. <laughs> But just like I wrote yesterday, I mean, that go always he's gonna always be in the news. I knew that his press conference was gonna go viral. Yeah, you know who asked that question? I need to, I need to write a T-shirt, uh, put some down uh, to document all the stuff I, I caused. Because <laughs> I asked him, it was, it was me. I asked him, are you jealous? <laughs> mm. You know, you, you're jealous of, of their success and. That prompted that answer. So then I said, I said, well, or maybe envious, maybe jealous not the word. He said, hell yeah, hell yeah, motivated me, all of that stuff. And he went down that soliloquy. But, you know, I, I knew and as soon as you know, I get home, it's all sports center and everything else. And, you know, that and, and of course, his other comment about, you know, I don't play for money. So I, I knew yesterday's press conference was going to go viral. <laughs> I was, but but it, it's, it's not what he's supposed to say. Of course you. It, it, you're motivated to see what the Mavs, Rangers, and Stars are doing, like success in the playoffs. You're motivated to see what Tom Brady's doing. You know, motivated to see what Patrick Mahomes is doing. You're, that, that, that's always motivated. Certainly, you are. There's no question that he's working hard. I mean, you can say what you want about his ability, but the question that he works hard and wants to win, you know, no, no one can question that. And, and but, but yeah, it's a great sound bite. And, you know, he put more. He understands that. You know, it's this one thing. He's not being naive to what people are saying uh, and what has been said, especially over the last weekend when you got all the memes about the last time since, you know, the team went to the conference championships and you got, you know, Mavericks and Stars and Rangers and the Cowboys got Emma Smith in 1995. You know, the photos out there. I mean, it, 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 it popped all last weekend and they're going viral. It's been easy columns, a macro column about it in my paper, I'm sure. It has been stuff that's been talked about nationally, so he's not naive to to what's being said. The pressure's already there, though. We know that. That's one reason why he doesn't have a contract. One reason why everybody's questioning the Cowboys anyway. So yeah, put more pressure on. Go win it, you know, because people are gonna say it anyway. 
Um, no, I, th- I mean, I think you're 100% right on that. And, uh, you know, my issue with Dak is I think it's much more of a uh, a mental thing now than it is a physical thing. It's just what can they do to get over the mental hump and actually get some playoff success because the difference between the Mavericks, I mean, between the Cowboys and these other t- franchises is when these other franchises have their moment, their team, they take advantage of it and get to the finals or get to the championship like the Rangers did a couple times or like the Stars have done. And even if they lose, okay, we played for the championship. This was our year. We had a great year. We played for our championship, and now we regress back to the, to the norm for another, you know, whatever it is until we can build it back up and go compete again. And the problem for the Cowboys, which is well documented, is when they have their great teams and their opportunities, they fold in the first round <laughs> and don't get there. No, I, I agree, but it's also kind of disingenuous because we all know they only hang uh, Super Bowl banners at AT&T Stadium. Actually, they don't hang no banners at AT&T Stadium because they never won there. But only hang, you know, <laughs> but they just moved, they just moved them over from from Texas Stadium. But my right. point is this: you know, I was arguing with a, a, a Laker fan last night, a LeBron fan last night. We, we moved the goalposts. You know good and well if the Cowboys got to the championship and didn't get to the Super Bowl, we'd be still mad. People would be still mad. You you, uh, you know good and well that's not good enough. Yeah, you know, I think you, there's, some, there's some truth to that. And, and you know good and well if they got to the Super Bowl and lost, when people wouldn't be celebrating, well, you still ain't got no ring like Troy Aikman. You know, people would still be saying that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a different standard here or expectation, however you want to call it, whether it's deserved or not. Yep. You know. I don't, I don't think anybody's disputing that. <laughs> huh? I don't think anybody's disputing that the, it's a Cowboys no, yeah. standard. That's why nobody yeah. cared when the when the Stars lost the first two games at the crib to Las Vegas. Yeah. I mean, I mean so. I mean. So, so, so what I'm, you know, so. So yeah, I mean they they I mean yeah they they got to find their moment wherever you want moment is but you know uh, until they get those up, listen and I and I would say this unabashedly as much as I've supported Dak and don't think Dak is the biggest problem Dak is not as good a quarterback as Luke and Kyrie are basketball players right correct <laughs> I mean I don't I don't think you stepped out on a limb on that. Again, those those cats know. are going to the Hall of Fame, and there's nobody who's ever said Dak is going to the Hall of Fame. I, I, all of that, okay. So, I, I, but the, I think talk, a better so, conversation so, would so, be so, if so you Dak. Huh? A better conversation would be if Dak were having the kind of year Corey Seager is having. The headlines every day would be what's wrong with Dak. And we don't read that about what's wrong with Corey Seager, who's having oh, an know. awful year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just going back to the, the problem with the Cowboys is give me some Hall of Famers to, to push you over the hump. Oh, okay. Now, see, I, I can buy that. Uh, that's a, you know what? We can go down that rabbit hole. Because when the Cowboys have won championships, exactly, they have had Hall of Fame players. And as I like to point out when I had that discussion, uh, we we'll use this 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 uh, template for this discussion, even though I think it's changed. But the six most important positions on the football field, I said the template's changed. But the six most important positions on the football field, you should be quarterback, running back, wide receiver, left tackle, defensive end, pass rusher, cornerback. Corner, yeah, yeah. Now think about the last time the Cowboys won a championship. They had five Hall of Famers and a pro bowler at them six spots. Is it any wonder why they won the championship? Now, if you fast forward, even when they were, even if you look at their great teams in 07 and 14 and 16, or even last year, ain't been no Hall of Famers in them spots. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe there have been some Hall of Fame possibles. Maybe uh, you had one Hall of Fame if you go, if we count T.O. But when you look at it like that, they haven't had – that type of uh, dominant talent in a minute, even though they've had great teams, you know. Right. And, and so sometimes you need them Hall of Famers to push you over the edge, um, you know. Now, 
Brady. Somebody said, well, Tom Brady didn't have a lot of Hall of Famers, but Tom Brady is the GOAT. So the GOAT yeah, doesn't need Tom Brady's the GOAT. I yeah, mean, but you got Hall of Fame coaches, too. Yeah, Hall true. of Fame coach. And then you got, you know, you go back to the Rams. I mean, they, Aaron Donald, you know, he was the difference in that Super Bowl. You know, he, he going straight to the Hall of Fame. Yeah. And uh, so, you, you know, know, it's... Uh, so I, that, that's all I'm saying is that it's easy to say with the, you know, but they need they need those type of guys and whether Michael or whoever is going to be that guy, CD they they have to step up when it matters most. Yeah, you know, they, they uh, have to show up. Now I will say you know, that Dak has not played his football when it, his best football when it mattered most, so he part of the problem, not part of the solution in in that particular conversation. I, yeah, all, I all don't of that. Know. I, don't, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? He has not played his uh, best football in the playoffs. Wait, wait. The, that, that, Green Bay, that, the Green Bay game, he didn't give up 40 points. First of all, first of all, I go back to the rookie year. Dak played a very good game against Aaron Rodgers yep. in Green yes. Bay. Yes, he did. Very good game. Look at his numbers. I mean, yep. but the notion Who? that he gets it down. But, but, but there's a there's – a, what I'm saying is there's this notion that he pisses out his leg in the playoffs. That's not true. Dak wasn't the problem last year. He was not part that, that, of the solution. That, that, well, how you well, going to solve, you gonna solve 40 that, points against Green Bay? How you going to get Did they not get the ball on offense? Yeah, but I'm saying you ain't going. You, you, you can't. If, if, you, if your defense give up that many points right off the bat, you chasing them the whole damn game. You, well, you, I, you, I, you, you under the I, gun the whole game. It, okay, you, well, you what about deep. San Francisco the two years before that? I, said, I just I said, said he, he didn't he, play his best football. I, I didn't he say he was. I said he wasn't the problem last year. I, I said he hadn't played his best football in the playoffs recently. So, you know, I'm not just talking about last year. That's, that's what I said. Recently. Now you're going recently because he, yeah. he, he Okay, he's he not played his best fucking football the <laughs> yeah. last three playoff games. How about that? You know you that's you, not, you know you done, you know you done cut. I didn't him, say right. he played bad. I just say he did not play his best football. Y'all going to argue not, me down about that? You know you can I, can, I, can, I, can I ask you can I, can I can, See the problem here is this again this is what I talk about with move the goal for he played one of the greatest playoff games ever beat in Tampa Bay two years ago. You, you just forget about that. Yep. No, I didn't. Yes, you That's did. four. You last three. No. You said last, last three. three. I that said, okay. That is That's four games. Four That's games. Now you went four games. Four. You said the last three. In this. I said recently the last three playoff games. <laughs> right. Um, so the last I really three. meant the last three years, so I misspoke. <laughs> See that? I mean, if y'all want to be Dak apologists, you can be Dak apologists. I like that. It's the last. I just said Dak has not played his best football in the playoffs recently. I don't think that's a lie. Again, I, 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 uh, Okay, so y'all think he's played his best football? No, there's no question about that. Not the problem. He wasn't the problem. I didn't say he was the problem. He's part of the problem. Lost Michael two years is part of the problem. Two years ago in San Francisco, again, that's why football is a team sport. Because two years ago in San Francisco, the loss of Tony Pollard really hurt that team. And okay. the firepower in that offense. You know, and, and you know, then we can go back to the defense and, and Trevon Diggs, you know, dropping an interception and, and not making play on the ball, which really was the difference points in the game. It, 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 it goes. They, they, they need all of their players, all yes. of their great players, to play well. The problem is we only focus on Dak. It's on, it's really really, Michael Parsons about. ain't played his best football either. Right, but we only but we only focus on Dak. That's because we were talking about Dak in this particular conversation. Next week we're going to talk about Michael Parsons, why his ass ain't at a minicamp. He don't need three extra days of boxing. <laughs> Again, but, 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 but at the end of the day, the, the venom on the Michael Parsons conversation won't be the same as Dak. Whenever no, because he's finished. not the quarterback. We, Quarterbacks always it, take more it, venom. It, it, they get all the girls and all the money. Ain't nobody it, feeling it, sorry it, for them. No, listen, we're just stating facts. It's not, you know, it, it, it is what it is. But, you know, just getting back to the initial conversation, I mean, you know, just, just going back, yeah, so so Dak is admit being jealous of, of being envious of being motivated, and, 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 and that's good. You should. I mean, don't run from it. I mean, it's, it's the case where should be everybody in that building from the, from the organization, from the ownership on down. You know, the difference in ownership is they got three rings to sleep, you know, to help them sleep at night. The players really? don't. Do you know, the players don't have three help rings to sleep, sleep at night. Huh? I'm just asking a question. Are you still sleeping on them three rings? Am I or is Jerry? Yeah, Jerry's sleeping Jerry. on those three rings. Jerry's sleeping well, 
goodwill on three wings and a $9 billion value of that franchise. He ain't missing no sleep. Well, he need to miss some sleep. Them three he, wings a long missing, time ago, man. He, he's not missing any like sleep if, on that. That's like if you ain't had no happy time in 29 years. You still living off the memories of the last time you had some happy time? What the well, hell is time. happy time? What is that? <laughs> Is that what you do? You, do, you, do, you have your, do you have your man bag when you do the happy time? What the hell is that? What is happy time? <laughs> happy time is love making. It's a nice way to say oh it on the radio. God. I ain't never said happy time in my life like that. What is that? Happy time, man. You know, well, you, have to, you have to contour your conversation sometimes for radio because so, you can't say everything <laughs> you want to say. So you can you say know, you can say I just didn't to, want to say effing on can, the on the podcast. You can say, so get, the, to, you can say get, to, get some draws or something. No, nah, yeah. I've, I've never said that. I've never said that. You ain't you never said my, you ain't never said get some draws. No, that's not my vernacular. <laughs> do y'all oh. talk this way with Todd Archer? Do, do y'all talk this way with Todd Archer? You got different conversations with different people. No, no, no. <laughs> no, Todd be done blushed by nineteen times by now. <laughs> Well, come, no. come on, different no. conversation with different come people. Come on, I, 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 the problem with Jack is you open the the conversation, you open the phone call. We're using the f word with Dak first. Now you, now you can't. That's because that, that was in Dak's quote. Start all that. Start <laughs> you all Dak's quote. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, Joe? Well, when he started hollering, you know you got him. So it's yeah, like, you, you know you, when, when he start all that hollering and stepping hit back dogs and all that. Holler. Yeah. But 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 sticking you with your hit dogs what? Don't holler, man. No, hit dogs gonna holler. Not yeah, yeah, they holler. do. They, yeah, they, you, they need do holler, your, you need to get your vernacular straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. Hit, hit dogs will holler. Okay, yeah, hit dogs will holler. There you go. Now, <laughs> hit dogs don't holler. If you hit a dog, he gonna holler, dogs. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. So, so getting back to your point is, yeah. it, when you've had happy time, at least you have <laughs> based on based on people that have not had a happy time. They don't even sound it's still right. A, it's still a different perspective. Okay. And, and so yeah. Happy time. So 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 some people have never, you know, you know, you know. So so but, some people who've never again, experienced happy time, they only they just wish they had. Look here, man. <laughs> if you trying to tell us something, I don't need to be hearing no about no happy time. Dog. Anyway, oh, it's, uh, it's you, Jerry's where glory hole. Okay. Oh uh, damn, word. we done went all off the reservation though. What? The that's not that's a Jerry word. I know that. Man. Yeah, we know. Never mind. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm killing my I'm killing my mic at this time. Go ahead. Okay, kid. Anyway, the bottom line is, yeah, the, the, the Cowboys are motivated. They should be motivated to win. And and again, I think the, the motivation inside the locker room is different than the front office because the front office has one. And and now the front office is worried about you know balancing the book. You know they 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 you know when they talk about. It, all in as it, it, it goes along with, with keeping the business solvent. It's not all in to win because you know we're desperate. There's no desperation up top. There may be desperation in the locker room, but there's no desperation up top. And that's so they, they, part of the problem. Just, no, possibly no. so. But that, that, that's 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 what it is. I mean, they're businessmen now. There's no desperation to prove anything. They have won. Mm. You know, which is why you get, uh, which is why you, you go into this year and you're asking them to win with less. Because we try, we don't want to. You know, we're not trying to go broke. <laughs> that's shameful. If, if if that's really it, it looks that way. It certainly looks that way. The way the I mean, you have more money right now. You have more money than you can spend in a lifetime, as we will see sometime in the next fifteen years. Uh, but uh, before we let you go, what? Uh, what was your take on Dak saying he doesn't play for money? Again, I, again, I knew that was going to go viral as well, and because people take, well, if you don't play for money, why you want to be the richest player? You know, it's, it's, the, the initial question was, how do you compartmentalize? Mike McCarthy talked about Dak's ability to compartmentalize and focus on the game and working out and, and get his teammates ready, even though you have this contract. Backdrop, and you know he said, "Cause I love the game, I'm not playing money. I'm, I'm focused on this. You know, I let my business people handle that. I let my business people decide what's how I'm valued and what I should get paid. Right? I'm focused on the game. 
I'm focused on getting ready. I'm doing what I can to be the best quarterback I can be. And I let my agent and the people that handle business do that. You know, and he also talked about how he took it personal last time. You know, during the, the negotiation last time, he took it personal. <laughs> because he was a fourth-round pick. He was trying to get made whole. He was trying to be a made man. He was trying to get his worth, you yeah. know. And, and, and I'm a fourth-round pick, so I never got real money. And I'm trying to get paid a guys of my equal value or so-called equal value. And so, then, you know, when the Cowboys were protracting negotiations, he took it personal. This time he's not taking it personal. He under, you know, he's been paid, but he's going to let it, you know, he understands the business. He understands, you know, they're they doing business. He, you know, Jerry supports him, loves him, but it's a business thing. And he's letting his business people handle it. And so, you know, I know the idea that him saying, I don't play for money and I will play for free when you go viral. And people going to say, well, they want to, they want, why you try to ask for the most money? Yeah, I hate when people say that because you ain't, you ain't doing your job for free. Ain't nobody doing that job. You want, you want to you do know? your job with what you get paid for. I don't want to no, drive no truck for no five dollars. You know, I, I want to get my money. I yeah, mean, I think I think people. Um, you just want whatever the market value is for right, your job. Right. When I was right. a columnist, I wanted to be paid like the rest of the columnists got paid. I ain't want to hear nothing about. It. Oh, you should be happy to be a columnist. I'd be happy to be a columnist if I got paid what everybody else who's a columnist got paid. Right. And uh, and that's all. No more, no less. And I'm good. And yeah, once I got so, that, I was good. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So 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 the the thing with the Cowboys and Dak is that, you know, we understand what the market is. And so obviously the Cowboys don't want to pay. I mean, there are people that think Dak can get sixty million dollars, okay? Because of, on the open market or, or whatever is value based on not just his salary, but also if you if they were to franchise and what the franchise tag would be because it would have to be uh, 150% more than what he's getting paid or whatever else, right. what the market value is because of the, because of the franchise tag they've already used on him. Uh, but the Cowboys don't want to pay, have to pay him that, but they want to, you know, him to take a quote unquote team friendly deal so he can sign other guys. And, and, and as I've been saying since I, you know, since the beginning, I've talked to everybody, what's palatable? I mean, is is, is fifty three million going? You know, make people okay. Dak deserves fifty three million. Dak deserves 50, is fifty five million. What number is going to make everybody happy? Like, because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if they don't win, whether it's fifty three million, fifty five million, or sixty million, we they, people still going to get mad. You making all this money, you're not winning. Yeah, I think it's whatever. I think it's. I mean, I don't really think it's that hard to figure out what the market value is. It's the structure, which probably is a bigger, bigger issue. Dak probably wants a three or probably wants another four year deal. And the Cowboys like, damn, dog, can you do six so we can spread this out? But it don't do him no good to do six. And so he's like, no, nah, do four. Yeah. Uh, he, he, I'm sure he wants to. I mean, he's 30. You know, you're going to do a e four, six, whatever it's going to be. However you structure it, the bottom line is that the numbers have to be the numbers. And it has to be. Baseline to me, fifty three million annually. That's the lowest, and and, and 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 you know you you see all these parameters of you know Garrett Goff getting one hundred and seventy million guaranteed and one hundred million in the first two years. You can, you know as long, as long as we're on those numbers, those record type numbers, then, then then do it how you want to do it. But but those are the conversations, and and, and I would say that that Dak and CD are the priority over Michael right now because you got another year on Michael, you know. But but again. CD is going to cost thirty million. He's going to get thirty million. That's that's that. There's no question he's going to get at least thirty million. How much over thirty million? You know, we'll see. But he's going to get at least thirty million. You know, on his next deal. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot of dispute about that. That's what the numbers say he should get. I don't know why they keep waiting, trying not to set the market. It's all, to me, it's always better to set the market than to uh, to to let the market set because then you're paying somebody else's number. But uh, they haven't listened to me for 20 years. I don't expect them to listen now. The the problem with we're blaming the Cowboys for waiting. Yes. It takes two to tango. Unless the Cowboys blow them out with an offer, maybe CD and his representative are waiting too. They're waiting to see what Justin Jefferson gets. Well, that goes back to my same Thing. You know what it you know what's required to get him for the most part. Just go get it. You know, but right. well, um, that means you go out to, that means you got to blow him out of the water. 
if if the if we can look at if you and I can look at overthecap.com and basically and I've just I haven't looked at it lately but if we can say CD based on this and that should be paid between 30 and 32 million a year with 100 guaranteed or whatever the number is but for the purposes of this discussion we'll say 30 to 32 a year with 100 guaranteed if we can look at the numbers of everybody else in his class and say he should be paid somewhere in that ballpark then it's not that hard to say okay we're tired of waiting dog here go 32 and 105 let's get it done because if we let justin jefferson do it it might be 34 and 150 I'm just saying I would rather be in control than not in control. Oh, like, I agree. That's me. And, and the problem with that is, is that, and I guess the problem, I, I don't think the Cowboys have even have done any real negotiate. I don't think they've done put any offers out. You know? They never so do. You, you know, so, you know, you, 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 you yeah, they need to, to take the initiative and be a more aggressive with this process. But they're not, and so I ain't really surprised. You uh, know, just, it's just like last weekend, like, like Dex agent was here, in the same room with Jared, no conversation. <laughs> you know, I was nah. just, you know, that face by finished gala last Friday night, and you know, it was funny because it's typical Jerry. And I go up there, you know, he's going to, you know, Adrian, going to talk to him and say, he said, I don't even know what he looks like. What does he look like? <laughs> Stop. You know, and I told him that the other day, he just started laughing. That's, 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 that's what he's doing. See, I, he don't know what he looks like, huh? Yeah, because he don't look what he look like. Yeah, I mean, so they didn't even have any conversation in the room. It's funny to me, dog. We'll see how <laughs> funny it is when Trey Lance is starting quarterback next year. We'll see who got the last laugh. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's, and we'll have a gentleman's bet over that because I think if it's not done by the start of the year, it ain't gonna get done. Uh, but we'll have a gentleman's bet over that. Perhaps, perhaps a dinner somewhere. We we can do that, but but. As you all know, Jerry swayed by the the moments. Yeah. And if something, if, if if they have a special year, all best could, that that could be changed. So I mean, oh, you, you can would, say then, it, it then you would have then, then you would have dinner at a very nice steakhouse. Yeah, <laughs> and you could get this. You could get the <laughs> the uh, surf and turf. It's all no, good. I want that. I want that that five thousand dollar tomahawk. Or that, uh, um, or that wagyu, uh, that wagyu, that wagyu steak, me wagyu. The, the, the wagyu that I accidentally ordered, but <laughs> didn't realize just by the ounce and ordered six. <laughs> Do what? Uh, I didn't realize it was. Uh, you had to order it by the ounce, and the price was whatever it was, thirty dollars per ounce or whatever it was. And so I was ordering it, and then once it came. And the bill came, and I was like, how the hell did the bill like this? And then it dawned on me that, oh, that price I saw was per ounce. I said, oh, this is, uh, I might do a lot more freelance work to cover this. Uh, thankfully, it was just me. I was just, it was just you, huh? I was with you. You know where we were? We was at the uh, Leukemia, whatever the Man of the Year event that Kim Alexander was having at that at that hotel, at that restaurant next to the Dallas Symphony or the Dallas Museum of Art. So yeah, it's fancy dancing spot, and I got caught. I got caught slipping, but it was just me, so it was my hundred and eighty dollar steak. And now you have the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. <laughs> All right. All right, man. On that note. We'll see you later. Hope you get some happy time. You know, I, mean, I know you're going to say something. We let, <laughs> hey, hey, dog, we let, we let Todd talk about the marriage. Just, you know what I'm I saying? I mean, you can talk about the marriage, man. You know I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I can't talk about no marriage. I'm trying to get you. I'm trying to You can talk about the marriage, man. What, 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 what's your Mavs take, man? What's your Mavs take? It's, it's, it's all good, man. I, I, I really, you know, I, I, I felt all along. And this, this is like, you know, when we talked the other day, you know, earlier, by Kyrie and Luca being, you know, Hall of Famers and having that. I mean, this backcourt, the 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 Kyrie and Luca being able to play well together and play off of each other, just it, it, it's just a difference. And, and and I don't think Minnesota has anything to 
to to to counter that. And it, it was interesting that that uh, Cat, which not Cat, but um, Ant, Ant and Cat, the three little guys, you know, <laughs> Ant, Ant, Ant called out Kyrie. He called out Luca. It was funny because why, why did you call out Luca number one? You know, after, after the beating Denver, you called out Kyrie, and you realize Kyrie, you know, is is, is, is not Jamal Murray. You know, you you, you can't. <laughs> You know, he and so so Kyrie certainly was motivated by being called out. But I, why why did Ant call out Luca? I'm trying to figure out because Luca six seven. We we had this conversation. You think he called him out, or he was just like, oh, in the next series, I'm covering him. You like, oh, I yeah, can't he, wait to cover this old motherfucker, or he was just yeah, like, oh he called no, him out because it was right after him saying I locked up Jamal Murray, I put him in lock. You know, he you know that, that's the young boy. You know, the same way he went out to Kevin Durant. And did you know the hip thrust? Yes, he was calling out Ed. He was calling out Kyrie. He wasn't yeah. just saying that's who I'm covering. Him. He was yes, I'm covering him. And when he said I'm covering him, means I'm shutting him down because he was glorifying how he shut down Jamal Murray. Mm. Okay, there's no question about that. Okay, well he got what he, he had he too much for. dip on his chip. I he got had too much dip on his chip. <laughs> <laughs> he got what he wanted. He did the Larry Lacewell honorary triple dip on the chip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, no, it, it's good. I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it's good watching the Mavs and see what they're doing. I, I, I think that, you know, Jason Kidd, again, does not get enough credit for how he's managed his team. You know, I you know, I remarked on social media the other day that, you know, because they were talking about Jason Kidd and, and, and uh, Luca and Kyrie were talking about how he's, you know, he keeps an even kill and, you know, the, the, the wisdom he gives them, you know, as an old point guard. And, and, like, you know, we're so old. I remember him and Jim Jackson were fighting over the same woman. And now he's now he's the Maverick Yoda, uh, and, and and but but he does not get enough credit for for again how he's managed the team, how he keeps them even killed after losses. They don't have back to back losses. Uh, uh, his rotations, you know, using some of the young guys. Um, he he's done a phenomenal job. Uh, I think so. I think uh, there's no doubt about it. I, I've said it all along. You know, it's, coaching is more than X's and O's. Some cats excel in X's and O's. Some cats excel in relationships. Some cats excel in strategies. Some cats excel in a number of different things. And the fact that he has figured out how to make sure that those two stars work together, hey, man, you earned your contract just doing that because now we got a squad, uh, he would say, um, they can compete. At least, uh, you know, everybody talks about all these other teams are young and their time is coming. The Mavericks are not an old team. No, people don't even understand that. that the Mavericks got younger. Kyrie. Everybody else is 25. Yeah, and look at <laughs> younger than Shaq uh, uh, Gilders Alexander. People don't understand that. Yeah, so oh, they're a young team. They ain't going nowhere no time soon. Uh, they got at least uh, two more years with this particular core. Um, with Gafford and Lively in that group, and hopefully PJ Washington, and hopefully uh, I like I really like Derrick Jones Jr. as a point as a uh, as a role player. Hopefully, you can find some money to uh, to bring him back because uh, I think he fits perfectly with what they like to do. Uh, you know, we spent a lot of time saying the Mavericks needed to figure out some athletic three and Ds, and look, and lo and behold, you look up and they got athletic three and Ds now, which is part of the reason why they winning. Yeah, I mean, you just just think of. She looked inside, and, and they were playing Donovan Powell at Central the last couple of years. And this is so much better inside when, when, without Powell. And, 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 and they got real guys, you know. You you know, so uh, now they, 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 they've done a great job. They've got a great mix, you know. The GM, you know, did a great job at the trade line and, 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 and side, trade deadline, excuse me, and, and, and adding uh, to this mix. And, you know, I – it's it's going to be interesting. I'd, I'd love to see the Mavericks in the finals. Love to see the Stars in the finals. After, after what the Rangers did, put more, more fucking pressure on the Cowboys as we close it out. Now, what do you think about the Stars' third line and how they contribute into the to the run? You know, that's just nasty work, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> nasty, Joe. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> what, what's up, Joe? He playing dirty food. He <laughs> <laughs> about the damn star third line. Like I know they first damn line. Well, I, I was sitting there. I was going. I was going. Okay. Okay. Chill. Chill. Finna hit that. Joey, Joey, chill. Finna Joey, do that. He, 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 Joe. He been. He been dirty. Yeah. Dirty. Yeah. Dirty. He's a dirty no good scoundrel. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, it like I, I was, get, like I, I was, tell him. 
All stars <laughs> questions are rhetorical questions over here. <laughs> you understand? I was uh, I was much dirtier today. The content guy told him I only had a three minute bathroom rule. <laughs> anyway, I don't even know what that means. That mean, that yeah. mean, why you going in there destroying my bathroom? Then you gonna leave oh, and go home. Yeah. <laughs> now Dave, now Dave giving me the look like three really. Minutes, I'm supposed to make you look bad on this next video. Uh, happy time. Yeah. <laughs> I learn something new every day. <laughs> you should see this look Dave is giving me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's cracking you up. I can tell. Yeah. 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 If you can't laugh on your own podcast, when can you laugh, huh? Hey, it's that voice. It's that voice. Hey, you know what a great friend of mine once told me? He wrote this down and put it in a note card and gave it to me. He said, we kick because we care. <laughs> Get in my life. All right, guys. <laughs> ah, all right, man. I'll holler. That's Clancy right. Hill Jr. Brought to you each and every Friday by Smokey John's Barbecue, where the food is to live for. Smokey John's Barbecue, 1850 West uh, Mockingbird. Woo! That was a good one, man. Uh, <laughs> home of the Jam Session Bowl. Jam Session Bowl. It's a wonderful meal of uh, mac and cheese base, and macaroni, or uh, mashed potato base. And then your choice out of two out of five smoked meats. And then uh, all that stuff you find on the loaded baked potato, like ch- bacon bits and chives and sour cream and cheese and butter, all that stuff, man, they put on it. <laughs> it is to live for. Uh, followed up, they drizzle it with sauce or they drench it with sauce, your choice. It is to live for. It's enough for two, real easy. And if you got a little shorty, uh, I promise you the three of y'all can eat off of it, no problem whatsoever. And that's the Jam Session Bowl, Smokey John's Barbecue. Now, it's on the secret menu. You got to ask for it. It's not up there on the menu. You got to know it exists. You got to ask for it. Okay? And the only way you know it exists (laughs) is you listen to the show. Uh, Now, if you got to have Smokey John's in your life right now, you can go to SmokeyJohns.com, click on the marketplace. You get the sauce and the rub right now. Have it shipped to your house in a couple days. You're good to go. If you got to have it today, check this out. Let me hook you, hook you up. You can go to uh, HEB's, any one of them, all over Dallas. And it's on the shelves. The rub is on the shelves. Boom. It's that easy. Burleson, McKinney, Allen, Wasahatchee. HEB's all over DFW. You can find Smokey John's Barbecue rub on the shelves. Smokey John's Barbecue. It is to live for. Now, get yourself some and enjoy it. Uh, let's go to the block, bro. Well, my granddaughter graduates next uh, next Friday, and I'm feeling a little melancholy. Uh, you know, graduation is a great time of year because it's uh, it's kind of like renewal. It's uh, it's the living out. It's it's really when you you you've done what your parents have told you to do. You've achieved that first course. You've gone to school. You've done it their way, you graduated, and now is your chance to literally spread your wings and fly and do whatever the hell it is you want to do. If that's go to a four-year college, go to a four-year college. If that's a trade school, go to a trade school. If that is being an entrepreneur, be an entrepreneur. If that is uh, go to the service, go to the service. It's whatever you want to do. Your life is yours, and it's an exciting time uh, for kids. Uh, what do you remember about graduation, man? First of all, you don't get to do whatever you want to do. Why and, not? and your life is not yours. What are you talking about? What, what are you talking about? Because you you don't get put like this. What you do, what you do with your future affects everybody. But it's yours to choose. That's fine. Okay. But what if you choose? What if you choose to sit your ass in my house and don't go nowhere? I didn't really think that was one. I mean, then, then when you do whatever, it means whatever. Well, I mean, you know, that, that, it is whatever. I mean, you could do that, and then that's oh, your you life. Can't. To that's oh, you your. Can't. 
Well, I mean, then that's part of you got to go. Well, you can't do I mean, whatever that could be you a whole choose. Another, that could be, you can't, you do, can't do whatever you choose. You it is your life. If get you out, choose to screw up your here. life, it, 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 it is. It, if it, you choose to screw up your life, mm-hmm. that's yours to screw up. I can help you. I can advise you. I can counsel you. But I can't coach you. I can't play for you. If you take all this advice and all this counsel and all this example I've shown you right. of how to be a productive citizen and you choose mm-hmm. to screw up your life, mm-hmm. that was your choice. I wish you hadn't done it, but that was your choice. What you do affects everybody. So you need to choose what you're saying. When you see the, the nuance here is whatever you want. That's the no. problem. That's it's the not problem. a problem. It is you literally problem. can do whatever you want. You can be, you can do whatever you want and be productive. You can do whatever you want and be unproductive. But the choice is yours. Now, I don't. We would never ask you to be unproductive. We I would never that. root for that. We would always counsel you not to be unproductive. But ultimately, we all know people. We label them the black sheep of the family. But we all know people who had everything they could do. And they chose, they made bad choices mm-hmm. and they didn't do nothing with their life. But that was their choice to not do nothing. It's no different than drugs. Tell your kids, I'd advise you not to mess with drugs. I would counsel you not to mess with drugs. Because, um, you know, I was all, and I can't speak, I can only speak for me. I was really swayed by Lynn Bias in 1986. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was really like, that dude built like a Greek guy. He did some drugs one night and he gone. I'm a little fat guy. I can't do that. That was that was my like damn. And I was 19 years old. I hadn't done any drugs before then, but whatever thought I had about doing something went out the window with that. But um, I mean, I think we're getting stuck here. The 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 point is, you turn 18. And it's your time. Normally, it's, I view it as your time to shine. And the world is your oyster. And you can literally do whatever you want to do to take advantage of that. I'm going to let you make it. Well, what did you want to do after you graduate? What did I want to do? Yeah. I wanted to go play college football. That's what, I, that's what I did. Okay. Uh, I think uh, nowadays, uh, and I can't really argue with people, uh, I think fewer people go to college uh, because there's a lot more ways to make money out there. And college can be so expensive, it can be prohibitive. And so I think you have to have a, uh, I think going to college is good. But you have to have a game plan for college because I think it's unproductive to go to college and come out with a $125,000 worth of debt. It depends on how you get there. What you mean? You get there by scholarship? You get there... Who's paying for school? Well, that's what I mean. Like, you know, now you might... uh, There's... I mean, it's like anything else. There's good debt and then there's bad debt. But... I mean, I don't think you want to come out of college and spend your first 10 years basically being an indentured servitude to to your work. I mean, to your student loans or whatever. You have to, you know, and I think that's why you see more people uh, going to community college for the first two years, take your basics there. Doesn't cost that much. And then, okay, now I kind of figured out what I want to do. Now let me go take my major classes at another university. It doesn't cost so much. Well, Um, it's like you said, you got to make a plan. I, yeah. got, I got two college graduates about to have a third. Now, what they do with their life is what they do. But as far as owing money for school, no, they're not going to owe that much at all. That's, um, that's I, the plan. I told my father, uh, I don't know, I felt it, but I, I didn't really, um, I probably didn't appreciate it like I, like I did as I got older. But I remember telling him, like, hey, man, best gift you ever gave me was no college debt. And he said, yeah, that was all part of the plan. Um, And so I was telling my son, I said, I hope you realize and understand that the fact that your parents can pay for your college education is one of the the biggest, best gifts you'll ever get. Mm -hmm. And he said, 
Oh, thank you, I know. And you know me, dog. How you know? Because I talked to my friends who got all these student loans already. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, so you probably do have an idea. He said, oh, yes, I do. Thank you. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, college education is a trip. And that's why I'm not uh, – there's a lot of ways to get what you want done in life. And, um, you know, so, uh, and that's to me why this is an exciting time for people who are graduating from high school because uh, you're out there and, uh, you know, it's a lot of things you can get done, which, uh, which leads me to this. There is nothing I like better. And I have lots of conversations with people about this. Chasing dreams. Uh, because it's hard to chase a dream. And a lot of times when you chase a dream, you're out there by yourself chasing it because friends, parents, people mean well, but they, you know, there's so much negativity tossed your way because you're trying to do something in most cases when you're chasing a dream that either not a lot of people have done or maybe not a lot of people have done in your family and they can't really see it the way you can see it. And so they don't have the same passion about it. And if you're not if you if you're not careful, their lack of belief or their lack of passion can suck the energy out of you. Uh, and so it's it's uh, it's it can be really hard. And so you know, this cat I know chased the dream, man. And he got his he been chasing his dream pretty hard, and he got his dream rewarded the other day. And I was so happy for him. Um, that I wanted to talk about it. And you know what his dream was, Doc? His dream was to be a Division I basketball player. And looking at him in high school, you go, you're a good high school player. I don't know how you're going to get to be a Division I basketball player. But I'm all for the dream. So go chase it Because basketball At least it seems to me The one thing you can do for real Is you can spend as much time As as allotted in the gym Working on various aspects of your game You can't get no taller But you can get You can be built better You can be a better athlete You could make yourself A 95% free throw shooter You can make yourself A very good three point shooter That's just time Time on task And uh, this dude man Went to a junior college Because he didn't get no offers out of high school And then he did the unusual act Of uh, spending a third year At a junior college And his parents were like What are you doing? He's like hey trust me on this If I stay this third year I'm going to get all the minutes I'm going to start And because I'm older and more mature I should dominate. And his parents were like, okay, makes sense. Give it a whirl. And uh, he played well. And um, he got some Division II offers. And his parents were like, hey, it's not Division I, but it's Division II. But you got offers. Somebody's going to pay you to play basketball and go to school. And he was like, but I want to play D1. They're like, but you got these D2 offers right now, and they're not guaranteed. You need to maybe take these D2 offers. He's like, but I want to play D1. So I'm going to go to these last two camps and see if I can get me a D1 offer. They go, but what if the D2 offers dry up? And he's like, if they disappear, they disappear. I'll go play at a D2 school that I don't want to play at. But I want to try to get the D1 offer. And so he went to the last two camps, man. And on the last camp, he got the D1 offer. Now, that's at a school I ain't never heard of. Have you ever heard of Ballermean Bal- Bal- University? No. I, dog, I ain't never heard of it till uh, two days ago. Well, there's a million schools out there. Yeah, but I felt bad. They play at the Sun Belt Conference. I'd have heard of the Sun Belt Conference. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't know got, if they got a football team. 
There you go. That's why we ain't heard of them. They ain't got no football team. (laughs) They they got a basketball team. Um, Because they in there, dog, with... uh, Let me make sure I get this right. They in there with uh, Appalachian State, Mm -hmm. James Madison, Troy, Arkansas State, Southern Miss, South Alabama, Georgia State, Georgia Southern, Texas State, Marshall, Louisiana Monroe, Coastal Carolina. I heard all of them because they got a football program. Uh, but uh, anyway, he has a, they moved up from Division Two to Division One, and uh, he's going to be playing Division One basketball, man. And the only thing about it was um, it's just I was telling his dad, it's great to see him chase his dream and get this dream because it'll tell it'll show him that anything in life if you grind on it um you know you can make it happen didn't say it was easy there's no telling how long it might take but if you grind at it and you're single-minded focused in your preparation you can get a lot of things done um and so i was really happy for him because uh, it's hard to it's hard to dream big man and then uh, and make it. So, kudos to him. Uh, Division one basketball player next year. Graduation's coming up. My granddaughter says she wants to be a chef. And so, uh, I'll be anxiously awaiting, watching her uh, chase her dream and see if uh, if she she can make it happen. Because here's the thing about chasing dreams. I think anyway. I don't think that everybody achieves every dream that they chase. But I think if you chase it long and you chase it hard and you chase it um, as hard as you can, and even if you don't achieve it, you can learn a lot of lessons that you can live with yourself because, hey, I gave it my best shot. I just didn't get it, and it's okay. If you chase it, but you don't chase it as long as you can, as hard as you can, or other people dissuade you not to chase it and you listen to them, I think you can end up with a lot of regret, which is not good. So uh, it's okay to fail in chasing the dream um, because you can learn a ton of lessons in life along the way. That's what man's opinion anyway. But uh, I just, uh, I love dream chasers, man. That's what I like about Content Dave. Really? Yeah, he's a dream chaser. All right. Here's my prediction. Y'all can say this podcast. Podcast uh, Content Dave. Let me see. This is 2024. Content Dave will be at uh, seven digits in eight years. How about that? 2032. Content Dave will be in eight-digit business. Seven-digit business. Now he might be eight, but seven digits for real. That's what I think. You know why? Now he's smiling at me. I was going to say, it's not because he spent a lot of time thinking on the throne, but he got a plan. <laughs> he got a plan. He's a hustler. He's a grinder. And he got a single-minded focus. So that's why, that's why Content Dave will, uh, will be a seven-digit guy in a short period of time. Uh, I got another friend who chased a dream, who achieved, who's getting ready to achieve. You know what his dream was, dog? His I don't dream know, enlighten me. His you don't say his dream was to be a PhD. And uh he's about to uh he just defended his dissertation yesterday. And uh he's going to be a uh doctor uh whatever his last name is and a uh Dr. Freeman in a uh in a few more months and he's been chasing his dream for about a decade, man. I had a dream to be a columnist when I was a youngster. And I was pretty much single-minded in my focus. And it took me a while, but I got there. But anyway, what dreams have you chased? I don't know. Or the decision or something like that. You know, I don't know. I'm I'm fairly unaccomplished. (laughs) I wouldn't say that. (laughs) No, I'm good. Um, Because everybody doesn't chase dreams. I had this con- I have this running conversation um uh, with a friend of mine um because his son is a dream chaser 
And he's not a dream chaser. He's like, get a job, go work this job, da 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 da. And I was like, there's nothing wrong with getting a job and working it. Nothing wrong with that at all. But he kind of wanted to chase a dream, and he ain't got. He's just out of college. He ain't got no kids. If you're gonna chase a dream, now's the time to chase it, because it's just you. When you get a wife and your kids, it's, you can't chase it like that, because you gotta make sure your wife and your kids are, are good. And so we have a we have a good dialogue running back and forth about that, because you know there ain't no right or wrong answer. It's just you know people have thoughts and opinions on uh, on how to get through life, and it's always good to listen to other people and hear other people. Because uh, it'll make you think about things in a way you hadn't thought about them before, which is what I like to do. That's why I sometimes I get on people's nerves because I just be like, why? Why? At least a good conversation, good questions. Anyway, that's our trip around the block this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Hey, man, I got some Waterloo I need you to try. It's uh, uh, what you call it? Pina colada. Very tasty. Non-alcohol. But give you a very coconut taste to it. Anyway. That's uh Anything else you got on your mind? <laughs> anything else you got on your mind? <laughs> if, if anybody's still with us, anything else you got on your mind? That's what, what I want to know. It's been a, it's, it's uh this is this was a this was a round the block trip to make you think, man. Cause graduation's coming up. A lot of kids out there, man. Parents trying to wonder what their kids gonna do. You know, just a way to make you think. Get some things off your mind. That's all. So that's all I got on my mind right now. So uh, remember, oh dog, I forgot. We'll talk about it on uh, Sunday. Uh, check out <laughs> the Real Shock Talk on YouTube. Season one, episode one of Shock Talk One Hundred and One has dropped. It's law. about Darren Woodson. I sent it to Coach to uh, Big Joe in the Big Red yesterday. Hopefully he'll get a chance to check it out this weekend. Let me know what he thinks. Uh, we, uh, I think the first episode was terrific. But like anything you put out there, you always see a bunch of stuff you could do better, some things you want to change. And so uh, we'll do that with, the, uh, with some of the upcoming episodes we got. Uh, you can always follow the show on uh, IG at The Real Jacques Talk, same as the YouTube station, The Real Jacques Talk. Hit me up on Twitter, at JJT Journalist. If you think you follow me, you probably don't, because my account has been hijacked in hell for ransom that I refuse to pay. And then, you can always hit me on, up on uh, Clapper. That's a new platform. Go ahead and download check it out. You'll be glad that you did. Uh, I'm a uh, content creator on Clapper. Have a good time over there. Put a lot of videos out. Talk a lot of stuff about the Cowboys and the Mavericks and the local Dallas scene. Uh, I am Jean-Jacques Taylor. is my handle over there, so I'm easy to find. For Big Joe and the Big Rig, till we chat again, you guys be blessed. <laughs>